Go away to what? You're alive now, so. What'd you say? You know Morgana? You're like human Morgana. Alright. So, like I said, everything else is insignificant. Math is not important. But, sometimes you guys need to see the big picture. The big picture is, that's the only thing that matters. Okay, Nicholas, put your computer away. So some students are wondering, like, why doing calculus? Instead of, like, doing the calculus, we can start our first lesson, talk about limits. Do you guys know why you're doing calculus? How many of you guys know? I was forced to. You were forced to. Yeah, great. I have to. You have to, because your parents told you. No. Well, you could have choose math study. No, my, my dad would have my dad. Okay. Dang. Okay, does anybody know why that we, we're doing calculus for? It? Good question. Nobody knows, right? Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about why we're doing this, not as opposed to how to do it. We're going to talk about how next week, but why. Okay. So, let's start by I understand what we did before. So all your past year, we learned about what all the basic math, right? So we start with the algebra, and we start with geometry, and then we got the pre-calculus. But why do we do this? It's all prepare, all this course is prepare you for calculus. See, prepare calculus. Right, pre-calculus, right? It's actually, a lot of people don't understand that pre-calculus is not only Calc 1, like, which is you're gonna take this year, which is Calc A, B. It's actually, pre-calculus has vectors, has a polar equation, they are calculus 3 material, okay? You are preparing the Calc 1 and Calc 2 and Calc 3, not only one course. You're preparing for three courses when you're taking pre-calculus. Okay, so that's a, something that people don't see. Also, once you did this, and you say at the end, what's the last thing you learn in pre-calculus? Trigonometry. Well, trigonometry in my class, but I kind of cramp everything in the last moment. What's the last thing I learn, and what's the last thing you learn in this P or Mr. Norman's class? Vectors, what else? Limits, right? Do you remember limits? Yeah. Okay, so all of this is going to guide you to limit process. What is limit? Do you guys have an idea what is limit? You say, oh, just take a limit. What is limit? Limit doesn't exist. I don't know, I guess probably. Exactly. <laughs> 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 On the movie, Mean Girl. Dude, you told me to find the limit, I found the limit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So limit, what is a limit? Anybody can tell me that? A range, right? Huh? A range, that's good. A range, okay, that's a good start. Not there yet, but that's a good start. What are the limits? Nobody can have any ideas? How much something can be. How much something can be? It has a limit on it. Okay, yeah, sometimes it can happen that way if you have like something plateau like this. Yeah, and what else? Um, when a value like approaches a slope. Okay, that's very, very close. Yes. Restriction. Restriction. Mm. Okay, I can see why is that, but it's not directly correlated. Anything else? No? You guys are boring class. <laughs> Sorry, just don't know, man. Okay. At least is looking up Wikipedia right now. Yeah, that's, it's actually on Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's give you some idea. Let's just say if I have a, uh, I have a black hole in this where I'm standing. We will die. Yeah. yeah, we are gonna die, right? If I mean we're gonna die. I mean, this black hole is so small. Only I'm gonna die. You're gonna be alive. 
Okay? So, if you look at videos as how do you die in a black hole, there was like six different ways to die in a black hole. Wait, don't I just make you become a noodle? Yeah, it's called spaghettification. Spaghettification. I can't even say it. There we go. So, it's gonna stretch you because the gravity is so high, it's gonna stretch you so fast. And it's gonna rip you to pieces, oh. or rip you to become like a spaghetti, and bad. becomes nice molecules. Yeah. That's a nice way to die. Yeah. Nice <laughs> way. If anything, I would choose that way rather than cancer <laughs> or Alzheimer. Hopefully quickly. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully quickly. Right. That's like. That's like. Dude, put me into that death. death. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take right. that over. It's probably painless too. I don't know. Painless. So. Yeah. Imagine that I have a black hole here, and now we're trying to find the location of this black hole. Okay, so this location is right here, and if I stand on it, I'm gonna die. So the only way I can do it is, I'm gonna get this spot right here, I'm gonna stick it so close to it, right? And maybe so close to it, that almost there, but it's not there, but we can safe to assume this is the correct location. Okay, that's how you take a limit. That's like a literal, I don't know, like a mathematical meaning, I really don't know how to put it, but the, Analogy is probably like that. It's getting somewhere so close to it, like you and your sister fighting, right? And uh, you are putting the finger up, and it's like, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, I'm not touching you, right? Do you guys just only see my finger, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, no. so I'm not touching you, right? Do they resume back? Yeah. yeah. Okay. They focus real quick. I'll focus real quick. Good. So, um, so you're not touching it until somebody like boom hit another person. Now I touch you, <laughs> right? So that's the idea of limit. You're getting so close to that thing, and you, because you're not supposed to touch them, but you're supposed to get so close to it, you almost touch them. You can really find out what is the location of the black hole, or you can measure from both sides. You know, I'm just gonna come from this side and start detecting where's the black hole until we get to one point that we say, roughly from this side and this side, we conclude that black hole's location. We're actually gonna do that on Monday. But, lemon process, okay? Now, lemon process lead to two problems, okay? There are two problems in calculus, the two unsolving problems uh, back in, I don't know, how many hundred years ago when Newton Isaac Newton and Limbus. Um, I heard one person is actually copied from another person's work, just like you guys, um, <laughs> IB students. Um, so one person actually published, oh, like I invented calculus, and the other person says, no, you did not, you copied my work. Uh, it's pretty much the same idea also between Newton and Limbus. But they both have a really diff a similar approach to something, which is later known as calculus. So. This part is going to be calculus, right? So calculus gets very interesting. So what is calculus? So what is calculus composed of? Okay, there are two different parts. One is two problems occur. Pardon? Oh, same thing over there? Okay. So obviously, same thing over there. We have two things. What are those two things? <laughs> the tangent line problem. See, somebody's paying attention on the board. Thank you. <laughs> the tangent line problem. The second one is the area under the curve. You said it, but you didn't write it. Line. Tangent line. <laughs> my brain is thinking, thinking that the speed is my hand. <laughs> The area under the curve, right? So um, obviously, there's two problems. Uh, there's two problems that they call it a tangent line problem. Okay, so Newton trying to find how fast the planet is moving at a specific time, and, uh, and that required a tangent line problem to solve. So, what are the tangent line problems? What are the things that you can think about? What is a tangent line? Okay, so how many of you guys know what is a tangent line? Opposite over adjacent. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's actually not bad. Opposite <laughs> over adjacent. Well, it'll be better if we like rise over run. 
but opposite of JSON, it's actually rise over run in a sense. So mm -hmm. that's good. Okay, that's good. Right. So that's something that to start with. So the tension line. We're gonna talk about this problem next. We're not gonna talk it first. We're gonna talk about so this is the first problem occur. This is the second problem occur. The second problem is the area under the curve. Do you guys remember the good old days that your teacher told you says, hey, you guys, I just wanna find out this areas and the Like count out how many rectangles. Mm -hmm. You count up one, two, three, four, <laughs> yeah. five. Right, the good old days. <laughs> it's like yes. All I gotta do is count how many rectangles. I finish my homework. I can go play. Right. So that was a good days. That was a good days. Right. You count the area and the curve. But you know. But uh, sometimes they give you even like a straight curve. They give you like something like this. Right. They give you something like this. And they just say, oh yeah, count the area under this. Okay, so that was, uh, that was the area under the curve. But the problem when it comes down to, what if it's not a straight curve? What if it's not straight lines? Not horizontal or vertical line? You becoming a little bit more challenging. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you what happened. So, so or uh, back in, I don't know, is the geography class? How you do that? What lot of class you do like finding like for example like the one adjoint over there? They say how big is this this place? And you just have to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it's like 10, 11, 12. And you 12 combine them. Yeah, you yeah. combine them. You actually yeah. combine them. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Like the almost half one that you yeah, should combine the like, other one. Yeah. yeah so yeah. You're, uh, uh, so do you remember this? Yeah, yes. Yeah. This is a good fun days, right? That yeah. when we don't have to work the homework days, no we can finish it all in class, <laughs> right? So the area and the curve becomes a little bit more challenging. So now you says, yeah, I can do it. Area and the curve. If I have this straight line, I can do it, right? So I can find the area of a trapezoid. Do you know how to find the area of trapezoid? I remember yeah. the You remember the formulas and you don't remember anything? Three split into a triangle. Okay, so one half, uh, base one plus base two, times the height. So this is a base one, this is a base two. The reason why this is not a base is because it's not parallel to each other. Do you guys remember that? This is a trapezoid on the, side, on the vertical yeah. way. So this is a base one, this is a base two. We're gonna come back and talk about this. Yeah, you had to tell your head, it says, okay, now it's real absorbed because there's two parallel line. Oh, I see it. You cannot use this side as a base. There's a lot of students trying to use this as a base. You can find this area. That's no problem, piece of cake. We can do that, trapezoid. It's something we can do, right? So we're gonna stretch that even further. So that says, I have an area of a function that says, y equal to x squared. So one and two and the fourth. So what if I want to find area of this? It's not a straight line. Can I use trapezoid? No. 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 Can I use a triangle? Probably can if I draw a triangle, but that's an approximation. But it's not exact. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start by building the area in the curve they start saying, okay, let, let's do back in the old fashioned day when we were in middle school, we count the boxes. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use something called right endpoint approximation. The right endpoint approximation is take the right endpoint right here and we're gonna build a box. And we're gonna build a box. And we're gonna say the area is one, two, three, four, five. Five. Is this accurate? No. 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 Is this over approximation or under approximation? Over. Over. Because what happens to this part? Okay. So how do I find the more exact? Using the same method. Smaller boxes. There you go, small box. You're a genius, right? Oh, good job. No, no, no. That's a really good box. That's what calculus is coming from. 
That's... No, I wasn't being sarcastic. If I were, you can tell. That's not sarcastic. So I can say, well, this is a 1, this is a 2. I might use 0 0.5 instead. I'm going to use a 1.5 instead. So I'm going to use uh, something like this. 1, 2, 3, 4. So something like this. It's going to go through 1, 1. Okay, so now I'm going to use uh, full boxes. Okay, as opposed to before. So I'm gonna, my drawing's really bad, trust me. Um, I can do a better job, but later I'm going to show you how to do a better job. So do you think this one is a better approximation than previous two boxes? Yes. Probably, more likely. And I can probably do a calculation of this. This is actually fairly easy. So I'm going to show you calculation of this approximation. So it's going to be what? 0 0.5 is a width, right? It's always a width. Multiply the height. The height is causing by 0 0.5 plug in the function. Because that's the height, right? 0 0.5 times squared. So I can approximate this. I can add this. I can add a second rectangle. I can say it's still the same width because they have equal width times by what? 0 0.5 the square, oh, 1 square, sorry. Am I going too fast? Do you understand this? That's the second rectangle, because 1, that means I have plugging 1 here, 1 square. That's the height. Okay, so this is right endpoint approximation. Plus, that's 0 0.5 times 1.5 squared, plus 0 0.5 times 2, uh, square and trust me, you had to do this on the AP exam. And that's one of the things later on that you had to do this. But right now, I'm just going to show you. Okay, so this, whatever this result is, if you have a graphing calculator, you can figure out the answer. It's probably, um, can somebody work it out for me on graphing calculator? Matthew, Matthew is fast on calculator, so, um, so you can get an approximation of this. So 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 squared plus 0 0.5 times 1 plus 0 0.5 times 1.5 squared plus 0 0.5 times 2 squared. Do you think this one is going to be, last, the last approximation is 5, right? Mm -hmm. I think. This approximation is what? Two. You think it's less than 5 or greater than 5? Less. less. Why do you say less? Because it's smaller than So that's, that's a good assumption. Come on, Matthew, hurry up. You're brown, you can figure out things. I can see that. It's a lie. Or slides? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, David. Why is it brown? Okay, so somebody walk out for me, please. Okay, remember the last approximation, I think is five. I'm not sure. Was it five? It was five. It was five? Okay, so last approximation when I do two right angle was five. Now I'm doing four right angle, what am I gonna get? Less. Do you think it's gonna be more or less? Some people say more, right? It's gonna be five. Wait, can I say less? Matthew, hurry up. Square roots in parentheses I'm putting, bro. You don't need to do square root. I mean, square. No, it's a mess. You know what? Yeah, I hope you didn't put one square. It's more. You did on me. Is what? 3.75? I think, I mean, I don't know if I did it. Okay, so. As long as you just do it yourself, you're smart. 3.75, we're going to say that's 3. Point, is it an approximation or is it exact? It's 3.75. Exactly. So the first approximation is 5. Now it's what? 3.75. Okay, so do you see that? Huh? I'm telling you, I'm not sure if I did right. 1.875. That's too small. Yeah. Wait, but it's 4 already. What did you look? Number 1. That's not even calculated. Yeah, that's not even that's two five times four. Oh, you divided by that. That looks no, cool. Can somebody verify, please? Okay, so. Huh? 
Is three point seven five right? Yeah. Okay, we're going to assume that's we'll this. Yes. So, but the reason why, let's compare the first drawing. If I were to do a first drawing, is what? It's based on this, right? So if I'm going to have to do a first drawing, I'm going to go back to the first drawing with the blue one. People say I, I need color code more. So, right? This is the first approximation. That's the first row approximation, right? So, do you see that? One, two, three, four, five. Do you see that? Yeah. So now we save some spaces, right? This space is taken out. That's a nice thing. So how can I find it more accurate? Yes. But you have to tell me the answer now. Yeah. I, I learned some new ones. Okay, so what is that? Okay, first of all, you need to go smaller. Second of all, you need to um, subtract the smaller. You need to go under the curves and subtract them. Okay, so those are the things that you can do. Right now, we just stick with over approximation. We're not just stick with under. But you can make it smaller, yes. So let's make it to eight, okay? So let's make it to eight. So I'm gonna do it to eight. So this is a first. Now, this is gonna be like this. Well, how can you use a different color? No. <laughs> um, See, you're already messed up. Yeah, so, redraw it. Redraw all of it. Yeah. Uh, so you get the idea, it's going to get smaller, because I'm going to, don't worry, I'm going to do a better job. This drawing, I'm not good at, it. okay? So I'm going to show you, digitally, you could have done a better job, yes. So here, and then here, it's a ghost, and then here, and then here, and then here, and then here, and here, and here. And here. So text. So if you're doing that, it's gonna get more better as a process going through. So what if I break to ten pieces, a thousand pieces, a million pieces, and that's what limit comes into play. Limit can reach anything, can reach infinity. So what if I break to infinite amount of pieces? What is my area? It's gonna be exact area. Just imagine you line up each hairs and add up all the hairs, things that you can see the exactly area of the curve. If I take somebody's hair, it's just kind of start lining up, right? And we count each hair as a one rectangle. Although it's cylinder, but we just look at the two dimensions, it's gonna be a rectangle. So that is becomes the problem, the area of the curve. Are we clear here? Okay. So we solve the area and the curve problem, but in terms of calculus, we don't call the area and the curve, we call that integration. Integration. Now, what is the first one is? The first one's interesting. Well, the tangent line problem. So we're gonna talk about the tangent line problem. So we're gonna go back and redraw this. What is tangent line problem? But first of all, you understand what is tangent line. How many of you guys know what is tangent line is? What is tangent line problem? What is, I think it was 4.25. Is it a curve? Is it 4.25? Yeah. Okay, I don't know, I don't really know. And just saying, I downloaded PhotoMath, and it took a less amount of time. <laughs> no, PhotoMath was wrong, it's 3.75. Okay. A tangent line problem is really easy. What the hell is a tangent line? So, tangent line is basically this pencil is acting like a line, a straight line, and it's gonna go like this. So that's a tangent line problem. So we can tell that if like this, see it's rotating, right? This is a tangent line. That means that there's only one point touching. And by the way, in terms of geometry, that point touching and this pencil, if you connect the same point to the center of that, it's gonna form exactly 90 degree, if this is a circle. Okay, if this is a circle. This is actually using to solve a lot of different type of problem. But, we start by, we know the slope of this line. That's no problem. I can find two points, I can find the line. But, lay down, what if this one divides to like this? If I want to find slope of this point. So that's the tangent line. Tangent line is only touch one point, And that's gonna go from there. But you're gonna start out somewhere. The tangent line is not able, we're not gonna find the slope of this tangent line that easy. 
we're going to start by knowing some other line first. Okay, so is there any different type of line that we know? Well, why are you going to ask that's a straight line? Yeah, second line. Okay, so Le Coton Ruin because he actually here this part before. So yeah. this is a tangent line, right? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to find a way to get to that tangent line. So we're gonna start with something called tangent line, a second line. So you're gonna say what is second line? A second line is really is pay attention. You have to know what a second line is. Okay, you have to know what secant line is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna demonstrate to you what a secant line is. Are you paying attention? Okay. No. Whoa. So this is a curve. I was gonna drink that. You can drink it still. Okay, so it's no longer, it's right here. We're gonna start by heading two points. Okay, a two point is gonna give me a tangent line on the curve. If you hit two points, so this point and this point, that's called a secant line. But we're gonna start with a secant line going toward the tangent line. Now the reason why I do this bottle is because make sure you guys know what the heck is secant line. Because secant line has a lot to do with calculus. Because we come in from the secant line to tangent. Okay, so that's you're never going to forget, right? <laughs> you it. Don't take it out. <laughs> you're never going to forget, right? You got that drip, you know? Who's going to drink it? I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. No, no, I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. Oh, my God. It's not drinking. It's drinking the whole. Wait, I thought you were going to drink it. I'm going to drown you. I'm going to drown you. Okay, so... So, what happened with... Uh, what is a tangent line? Uh, what is a secant line? So secant line start with, I want to find the graph of this point, and uh, I can start by taking the two arbitrary points right here, because I want to find this. This we're going to call the tangent line. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a two random points, and we're going to start by the red line here. So we're going to start by doing this. And uh, we're gonna reduce, we're gonna get this smaller. Okay, so we're gonna pick a random point here. And we're gonna pick a random point here. And we're gonna pick a random point here. Don't worry, I'm gonna do it digitally, much better. Okay, so now you can draw eventually this line will go into like this to like this tangent line. If this two point getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Got it? So why is tangent line? What kind of application that we can think of? How many of you guys own a car? What kind of car you drive? Uh, Camry. Camry, okay, you? Honda. Honda? Ford. Honda 2006. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're old. Uh, okay. Okay. Yes. okay, for me, I just... Most of you guys know what my car looked like because I always block everybody in college car and in the band practice. So I park right that in center. Was that you yesterday? Yes. <laughs> Wait, what? Wait, what? Why? Because they said, I think they said like oh, the license plate or something. Um, so they know me. I think that Ding Cox been threatening me. Uh, I say that. Been threatening to move my car. He's like, we're gonna get all the car guards just live your car and just kind of move you over. And, uh, that's what happened. But I, I got a new car, by the way. I have Impreza now. So Impreza is a really nice, fast, fast car. Yeah, it, they can. I can people. I can rent people over now. Okay. Um, and especially I have one eye. So forgive me if I do cut you off in the morning. And I cut you off with one eye. Put my blind spot on this side, so it's worse. <laughs> How are you even allowed on the road? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they just give me a license. You got his license before okay. he it. I bribe the uh, instructor. Don't um, say that. <laughs> okay, so what happened is, we're gonna go from here to become a tangent line. Now, you gotta think about 
what is tension line really is. Let's think about this. Let's think about secant line. So we're going to think about secant line. S E C A N T line. And then let's go into the tension line. So we're going to talk about application as well. Application says, well, secant line. Like me driving, right? I'm driving very fast and uh, I got pulled over, right? Um, I'm driving 80 mile per hour in the middle. Good job. Okay. I did 80 on the Okay. I did 80 on the Don't drive fast. Don't drive fast, by the way. I'm just joking. I don't drive that fast. fast. <laughs> <laughs> so, what happened is I'm driving. So, to think about it, let's think about first of all, let's think about what average velocity is. Let's think about average velocity. Let's just say from you here to your house is 10 miles, right? And somehow I'm driving very slow, so that's really easy to tell. So it's 10 miles, and then we say it takes one hour to get there. So this is a changing of distance over changing of time, so one hour. So that means 10 miles per hour. Okay, 10 miles per hour. So 10 miles per hour, you, you know, is, is you know, pretty slow. Okay, you can probably ride a bicycle yeah. in 10 miles per hour. Okay, so let's say if my house, let's say, is 60 miles away, so 60 miles away, and I'm still taking one hour, so it's 60 miles per hour. But are you driving 60 miles per hour the whole time? No, no. I don't think anybody can do that. Even with cruise control, when you see red, when you see red light, you have to stop the car, right? Do you? <laughs> you have to stop the car. So 60 miles per hour, you have to stop the car when you go to Middlewood, going across to the Middlewood uh, Middle School, and there was a flashlight coming, and you got to drive slower. So do you have to think about all the speed. So think about the speed. That 60 miles per hour is my average speed. But what happens when police pull you over? They give you a ticket, right? When you're driving 80 miles per hour. Why is that? So I'm going to show you. Why am I so I'm going to show you like uh, maybe some, I don't know, arbitrary curve where we got position versus time. And then we got something like this. And um, so what happened is average speed, which is the slope of this line, which is the secant line, which is the average speed, average velocity. So average velocity between two points. So I can take this using the point slope, using the slope and I can find out the average, okay, which is changing position. If I have one, if I have 10, so it'd be 10 minus one over, I don't know, let's say, if I have two to five, so it'd be five minus two. So that's gonna be nine over three, that's equal to three, right? So if I have that. But what is, what is the tangent line relevant to this whole thing? So imagine that you cannot tell you when the cop pull you over, you're driving 80 miles per hour. Okay, you're driving 80 miles per hour. You cannot tell your cop says, look, my average speed is 760 miles per hour. You cannot tell the cop that because cop doesn't buy that. So what's the difference? Is actually you are right here in this point. And you have a tangent line like this. This slope is greater than this slope, right? Yeah. So that means at that point, at this particular time, you will drive awfully fast. But remember, everything's average, right? So if you take this point and this point, you still get to home at 60 miles per hour. But at this point, you're driving super fast, which is like 80 miles per hour, okay? So you get pulled over, you get a ticket. That's called instantaneous velocity, by the way. You guys are gonna hear that term later. Yeah, in physics also, you're gonna hear instantaneous. Average velocity is right here. This is called instant. Instant is a slope at that point, as opposed to a slope of average. Okay, does that make sense? So, yes, I do a crappy job on the drawing. So, uh, I think I'm gonna do a better job. Okay, I'm gonna show you a better job as far as the area of the line problem and uh, also the tangent line problem. So we're gonna start with the tangent. So we're gonna look at here.
Those of you guys are going to get used to me, my class, my class is going to be always using, right now we're not going to use the grabbing calculator, we're going to use a lot of decimals. You're going to see on decimals much better than what you can do. So I'm going to play along, I'm going to play here. So is this tangent line or secant line? Secant. Secant, secant because go through two points, just like that water bottle. You're never going to forget what the hell is this secant line ever again. What's <laughs> secant? Okay, if I had to demonstrate you to you again, I'll do it again. So much satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> something legally. <laughs> I can do that to children. Um, so this is a secant line. So you see the slope, right? You see the slope is zero point four five. And actually, you can play. You can play pretty cool. You can play this. That's Just. So <laughs> Why is that for the game? Two point. Uh, the, the, the is that how like, the right? bull jumpers do it? They use calculus, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, what the idea is this. Uh, in order to draw a tangent line, you will do a better job by looking at this, and you're going to shrink this h. h is the distance for this dot and this dot. So, that's shrinking that. So we want to find a slope at. <laughs> we want to find a slope at this point, right? Oops. Nice. That's really crappy. Okay, that's okay. That's let's say we want to find a slope at this point. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink this distance. This shrink. distance is gonna be like this. Shrink. Oh, which shrink? Do you see that slope is changing? Look at the slope right here. Okay? Slope went from what? It went to uh, 0 0.19 to what? Changing, changing. It's getting closer, right? 0 0.8, 0 0.917. 0.7. Undefined. Okay. So we're going to talk about why that's undefined later. But we are technically take this and getting closer to that and to become a tangent line. So we can find, if this is my, uh, let's say, position function, I can my, find my speed at that moment, at any moment. That means like your, the cops that is taking a laser gun is shooting your instantaneous velocity. This is the first thing we're gonna talk about, which is something to do with Derivative. Okay. You're on live. <laughs> <laughs> We've got some general afternoon announcements, so I will begin now. First, Quiz Bowl is an academic competition where you are pitted against the schools and answer yeah. questions Please. based on your knowledge of five or four subject areas. It's basically like Team Jeopardy. Like if you're interested, come to Mr. Dunlop's room, 8201, directly after school on Monday. Next, mm -hmm. the annual meeting for the National Spire National and Spanish Honor Society is August 27th after school. Location 1200 212. The sponsor is your home day. If you're interested in Best Buddies, they will be having an interest meeting on Tuesday, August 27th at school at 230.
Are you looking for ways to help sites and become more environmentally friendly? Are you looking for volunteer opportunities? Are you looking for ideas for your gas projects or your IA? Like someone to need to show up and post to get first energy and then build. Today, Friday, today, in the bioengineering lab in building 700, you are already on the phone. Why don't you want to go to the phone? Why would I want to do it? Because you're smart. Right? What is it? What are you doing with this one? Okay, so they, they ask you questions trip. about literally anything. I'm bleeding. And it's like a team, right? That, that's definitely for you. No, 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 no. Because we need people who specialize in general body and be like on that August 26th. It's not going to work. Can't convince it. Mr. Barron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly. Look at that. What do you win? You have a big Trophy from Lester Paulding. What do you win? Okay, so look at this. Look at this. This is a four right angle, right? Yes, sir. This is a four right angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shank it more. And I'm gonna let it play. Right. So do you see this? Now if this is not accurate, right? So it's getting more accurate. It's getting more accurate. That's how that's you, if I go into 100 pieces, that should be pretty close. But I would trust that evaluation much better. So 100 piece, I'm pretty much going to think, but if you go zoom in enough, you still see that there are small, small extra things right here. It's pretty big. Okay. But overall, that's in scale, that's very small. If you look at the scale, let's look at that. What are the scales? Uh, you cannot see the scales, but you can see it from the graph setting. Um, you know, it's very, very tiny. It's very, very tiny. Mm -hmm. So, but you can break to a thousand pieces, a million pieces. An idea about calculus is to break this to infinite amount of pieces. If it breaks to infinite amount of pieces, then I can find an exact value. What you say? So all you have to do is break the infinite amount of pieces. So this most is one of my favorite thing in the classroom. It shows a lot of things. It shows a lot of things that what my drawing cannot show because my drawing is a very crappy job. And um, so this is going to be better to show you what happened. You more likely can play with it. Um, you need to learn how to play with that most. That most is going to be your friend. And it's going to help you on a lot of things. If you're in my pre-cal class, we play a lot of games on it. Um, we build mobile slide, we build a lot of things. Um, so it's really, really interesting how you can use piecewise function to get this. Uh, a lot of things that you can be done with us, but that's most. You can actually do integration, you can do all that. We can actually do 3D stuff, which is that's what we're going to do later. Yes? What does your tab say kill? What? Your tab behind Desmo. That's kill. What? <laughs> Who are you trying to kill? <laughs> kill the president. Kill president Trump. <laughs> it says kill me. Hey, kill, hey, I hey, swear, hey, are you trying to kill me? Go to that page. Go to that page. I'm not doing that. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh my god. Unbelievable. Every time you do it, it is a Kill me. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, every time you clap your hands, the child in 